All right, this next demo is a fun one. We're going to use volatile today and now functions to add real time formulas to our workbooks. So the today and now formulas basically just return the current date and time. And because they're volatile functions, that means they automatically recalculate with any workbook change. Now, if for whatever reason you don't want them to change, you just want to stamp the current fixed date or time, you can use the control semicolon shortcut to return the current day or the control shift semicolon to return the current time. And unlike today and now functions, those will just stay hard coded. Those won't change dynamically. Now for this demo, we're going to build a couple of pretty quick project pacing tools. And in the first case, we're going to use a today function to build a project tracker based on days past and days remaining. And then we'll use a now function to build a similar tool that's based on hours past and hours remaining for shorter term projects. Now, common use cases, anytime you want to display the current date or time in a worksheet cell, you can use today or now. And creating tools like this, like schedule or timeline tools that you want to update based on the current day or time. So let's jump into Excel and actually practice working with these today and now functions. All right, so from your table of contents tab, look for the today and now demo in your formula tip section and go ahead and press link to jump to that green tab. And from here, you'll see that I've built out a blank placeholder template for these two project tracker tools that we're gonna build. And the first one's gonna be based on the today function. So selecting cell C4, if we were to just use control semicolon, that shortcut will drop in the current day. And that current day is correct, it's October 16th. But the problem is if I come back tomorrow or next week, this value will continue to read 1016. It's not dynamic, it's static and hard coded. And that's not what I want here because we want to build a tool that's dynamic, that changes based on the current day and current time. So because of that, I'm gonna use the today function and I don't even need to enter any arguments. You just open and close the parentheses, press enter, and there you go. Now we have that same value, 1016, 2018, but it will change every single day that I access this workbook. So I've dropped in a sample start date and end date here. You can change these values as you see fit if you want to explore and play with this. Now, one thing that's important to know about Excel dates is that every date, just like this one, has an underlying date value that's a whole number. And that number represents the number of days that have passed since Excel's start of time, which is January 1st, 1900. And because every date is backed by that whole number date value, it means that we can apply simple mathematical and statistical operations against date cells to do things like time intelligence functions. So to give you an example of that, if we want to calculate the project length in terms of days, we can simply subtract due date and the start date. And that will tell us, okay, there are 728 days in this entire project timeline. Now, same logic for the other formulas, number of days that have passed, well, that's just today's date minus the project start date, C4 minus C6. And the days remaining is as simple as the due date minus today's date, C7 minus C4. When we press OK, you'll see this donut chart populate, which now tells us, okay, you're 288 days into this project. That represents 40% of the entire project timeline. Good way to kind of keep a pulse on progress, especially for long-term projects like this one. Now, the one tweak I'll make here is that if we populated a due date that has already passed, like October 1st, 2018, for instance, you'll see some weird stuff happen. You get a negative days remaining that gets plotted on the chart in kind of a weird way. To prevent that from happening, let's go ahead and modify our formula here in cell C11. And I'm gonna place the cursor right after the equal sign and add an if statement, simply to say if today's date is greater than the due date, if the due date has already passed, we're gonna comma over to our value if that's true. And if the value is true, if the due date has passed, then we're just going to enter a zero because there are no days remaining in this project. Comma one more time to the value of false. Otherwise, we're just going to run our formula C7 minus C4, just like before. So close out that parenthesis, press enter. 
and there you go. Now our graph kind of caps at 100%. And we can go ahead and add whatever date you want uh, in the future. I'm going to do 11 25 2019, for instance. In that case, we're 42% of the way through that project. So that's a good example of how to use the today function with whole number calculations. Now we're going to get a little bit more granular and practice working with dates and times as well. And because we want the date time, not just the date as a whole number, we're going to use the now function. Again, no formula arguments, just open close those parentheses, press enter, and you'll see that it gives me a value of 10 16 2018, 15 42. That's military time for 3.42 p.m. And keep in mind, this isn't just giving me just the time component. It's giving me the date and the time combined. So I've got, just like before, I've entered in uh, some initial constraints for this project. I've got a start time of 9 a.m., a due time of 5 p.m. So we're dealing with a much shorter timeline here within a single day. And the one thing that I need to do before I can move forward is actually strip out just the time from this now cell. Otherwise, I won't be able to make direct comparisons against these values 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. So here in cell C21, I want this cell to return just the time component of that date. I'm going to show you two ways to do that. The first is using Excel's time function, and it looks for an hour input, a minute input, and a second input. And I'm going to get those inputs using time functions and pointing to my now cell. So the time that I want to return is based on the current hour, which is the hour of now, the current minute, which is the minute of now, and the current second, which is the current second of now. Close off two parentheses, press enter. That translates the entire date time string into just the time piece, just 3.44 p.m., which is exactly what I want. Now there's one quicker way to do this, but it requires a little bit of a deeper understanding of how these date and time functions and date values are really working. The bottom line is that individual days in Excel will be treated like whole numbers, right? If I right click this date cell, 10, 16, 2018, format the cells, go into general category, that's a good way to see what the actual underlying date value looks like, 43389. Again, that's the number of days that have passed since January 1st, 1900. Note that it's a whole number. If I compare that, actually let's cancel out so we don't apply that format. Let's compare that to the now function, which remember is the current day plus the time piece as well. Can you guess what that's going to look like? Go ahead and general. Note that it's that same date value with additional values after the decimal point. And that's because times are treated as fractions of days. And fractions of days, in terms of date values, just look like fractions of whole numbers. So if we want just the time piece, which would be just the 65577 following the whole number, all we need to do is literally write a formula that takes the now calculation and subtracts out the day, which is the whole number, and you're left with just that remainder, which a minute has passed, so now it's 3.46 p.m. Slightly easier way to do it, but again, it requires that kind of deeper understanding of date values. All right, so back to the project. All we need to do now to take this to the finish line is calculate the project length in hours, which is simply the due time minus the start time, 19 minus 18. Hours passed is gonna be our current time minus the start time. This is just like those date calculations we just did above. And then last but not least, the hours remaining is gonna be the due time minus the current time, C19 minus C21, press enter, and there we go. So our project started at 9 a.m., it's gonna end at five. Currently it's 3.46, which means that I only have an hour and 13 minutes left. I'm 85% of the way through this timeline. I better get cracking if I want to finish this project. Now, last but not least, if we want to create that same if statement modification to control for cases where we've already passed the due time, we can do that using the exact same methodology here. If our current time in C21 is greater than the due time, if we pass the due time, 
then there are no hours remaining in her project. Otherwise, calculate C19 minus C21. So that was a very quick crash course in Excel date values and today and now functions, but hopefully that's given you some good ideas for how you can use these volatile functions to create your own real-time calculations.